put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Kane and Lynch 3, White Norways. Or, as it says on the case, Max Payne 3, video game review. Max Payne has fallen something further down, and the, the eight years that's eight, nine years that have passed in real life have also passed since the end of the second one. Possibly because that would be just about long enough, Rockstar hopes, that fans would forget the ending of the second one, because this pretty much retcons that and thus retreads the familiar ground of Max trying to deal with the death of his wife and daughter. And at first glance this doesn't seem like a huge deal necessarily, but really when upon closer inspection it, it brings it further away from being Max Payne. They, they apparently couldn't think of a good way to follow up the second one, so they more or less ignore it. Mona is barely even mentioned in this, which is a huge disservice to the character. And yeah, so anyway, with the passing of some years and Max sinking further down, he is now a full-on alcoholic. It, this was hinted at before in the earlier games, but now we really see. Yeah, he's, he's constantly drinking. And, yeah, he's, he's kind of just... Yeah, he, he refers to himself as a has-been. At, at this point, and he is also, you know, aging at this point. The, the he's hired by a former cop friend of his to do some bodyguarding in Brazil, Sao Paulo, and that's basically where that's where this pretty much this whole thing is set, and he's bodyguarding these obnoxious, rich, spoiled kids. Not literally children, but immature enough to be, though, who go to raves in helicopters. And, yeah, that, that is some... Someone in his care is abducted, and he has to try to get them back. And that is basically the, the plot here. So yeah, as, as I said, it's not really that... It's not inherently Max Payne. It's basically that Max Payne is put in this story that didn't need to be about him at all. To, to be fair, they do go into his... It's, it's quite centered on his character, and he, you know, with, with them taking him all the way down, you know, become, making him a full-on alcoholic, raging drunk, they do go for some character growth in there as well. It's, again, just too bad that it, to do that, they have to ignore growth that's already occurred. Now... It's, yeah, I've, I've already drawn the comparison to uh, the Kane Lynch games. This really is the kind of story that would fit them, but not.
not really Max. Kane and Lynch need to be in this sort of... somewhere they don't really want to be and doing something they don't really want to be doing, but they just, they feel like they have to. They're, they're, they have no other choice. And when you look at the Max Payne stories, the stories of the first two games, it's true that he, he was caught in a bad situation, but in part it was also some, he, he made some choices and he kind of, it, it was also, it was always very personal. And in this, it really isn't. They, they don't particularly bring back characters that we've already seen, almost not, at least. And most of the new ones are just not terribly likable. The, the people you are there to protect in particular, the game goes out of its way to make sure that you hate these people. There is some good character interactions, some good drama, however. But the... But, but yeah, basically, this kind of story doesn't make that much sense for Max Payne, and it doesn't really suit him too much, either. I, I, I should say, it is explained, I guess, I guess why he <laughs> looks like a bearded Bruce Willis, and he doesn't start out looking like that, don't worry. He, he's much more familiar looking when the game starts. And the story is yet again told in a non-linear fashion with us seeing the very end at the very beginning. And then we find out how it got there and what exactly was going on. With you know, we, we get some we don't know exactly what was going on in, in the glimpse we see of the ending. And again you have this effect of as you get closer to the end, you recognize wasn't that where the ending was set, and, and stuff like that. There are some problems with this non-linear approach, though. It's one of the several things of Max Payne that Rockstar don't seem completely comfortable with. There, there are some confusing Basically, the, the, um, the structure of the narrative is, can, can be confusing at times. It, it'll jump kind of just because it, was, it, it needs to tell you something that's better handled in, in some other way. And it just, yeah, it's, it's unnecessarily confusing. It, it is nowhere near the, the fantastic nonlinear timeline. Of the of, of the second game and the story is not that complicated and because of that they stretch it really obviously like as, as I already said the, the early on someone you are taking care of gets abducted and you are out to try to get them back. This is not really a spoiler because literally this is just um this is just the first level. The first level is some guys trying to abduct someone in your care. But they fail. So why did we need to see that part of the story? I I guess it sets up that they were already trying, you know, that they, you know, even though the first attempt fails, you know, someone still gets, gets abducted, but it's just not really necessary. When, when you look at the levels of the first two games, I defy you to find a level that doesn't at some, in some way further the story. You could say that it establishes character in this, but you should be able to do both establish character and further the story. And again, yeah, yeah the, the first two games do both with the various levels. The, the, yeah, 
Yeah. And most of these jumps in chronology are just to pad out the story. We see something that we might not even need to see at all. There are several jumps to, I, th I think it's New Jersey, before the before Max goes to Brazil, he's, he's met by his, you know, former, uh, I think something, they, they went to the police academy together, Raul Passos. And, uh, yeah, the, the, some of this was fine, but there were times where it's going to do more flashbacks than you think it will. For, for the New Jersey thing. There's, there's literally, there are, there's no use for several of these flashbacks. It is just to get, get the game to, you know, a, a greater length. And even so, it's still the shortest of the three. It took me seven and a half hours to complete. And the, the, the upside is that there are unlockables this time around. I have not actually gone through them all. I've, I've just tried the modes that get the unlockables for review, for the sake of this review. And I could imagine that with that, it will triple, maybe even quadruple that length overall if, yeah, if you go for all these unlockables. And that obviously, you, know, you could argue that the, the first two games could have used something like that. In the, in the first two, there's really nothing but getting the next difficulty setting and, of course, New York Minute, which returns. That might more or less cover the story and such. Another thing that I've already alluded to is that Yes, basically, like I've already said, the, the story is, is stretched. There's, there's not a lot here, really. It's not to say that what there is is necessarily bad, and overall the story holds up. The, 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 and there are twists. You, you will not see everything coming, definitely. But, yeah, they, they kind of... Rockstar realized this, and so they, they in part padded it out, and in part they tried to distract you from it with white noise, as I've already alluded to. Basically, Max never shuts up. I, I don't know if it... I guess it's the drunk thing. He is drunk, and he is a drunk. Him retelling the story in this one, he's always retelling the story in past tense, in this one, he comes off like Grandpa Simpson. He is just rambling, going into details that don't have any kind of... He never shuts up. There's constantly either dialogue or his narration. And in and of itself, this doesn't... A high frequency of such is not necessarily bad, but again, there's not much here. So it's just the same thing over and over. Raul and Max constantly, like, you know, do, do the macho guy thing of, like, you know, oh, I'm fine, you're the one who's not doing so well, you know, it's kind of, yeah, the, the buddy cop kind of thing. And again, this, this, that's not a bad thing in and of itself. It's, the, it's because it's every single thing they say to each other, and Max is constantly narrating, and he basically has just a couple of, of top... I'd, I'd say basically three things. I slash we have no plan. Woe is me, you know, Max going into the... You know, he's, he's a tortured character, and again, that that is actually a, a, a trademark of his. It's just that here, it's just he's constantly talking about instead of just letting you breathe, letting you piece together things for yourself. And the third would be, this is all my fault, I should have been better, I shouldn't have been drunk. And 
all this stuff and it loses its power when it's repeated over and over. The, you need silence every so often. And the, the, the second game introduced this thing of if the player doesn't proceed for a while, you know, it'll, it'll tell you what you should do. It'll, it'll repeat, restate an objective or give a hint or something like that. In that game, it was already a little annoying, and, and it would happen when you were just like going around, getting ammo, you know, trying to find the the exact path, and it's just annoying to have that kind of, especially when it's it's basically not. It's it's just the game saying, you know, telling the player, okay, just get with the program, come on, without it actually having any kind of consequence. It's not like a timer ticking down. If, if you don't hurry enough for the game to not throw these hints or restating of objectives at you, nothing's actually going to happen. So, so it's basically just, yeah, just, just to rush the player needlessly. And in this, it's much worse. Constantly, like, every time you're just going around looking for painkillers, which are still there, Getting ammo, trying to figure out if you should, you know, get some some different guns, stuff like that. Constantly just repeating. And another thing that these these constant narrations are trying to cover up is the fact that the cutscenes are just everywhere in this game. Like basically, there are no loading screens and there are no panels. The story is told through these cutscenes. I do appreciate the style of these cutscenes. You basically have, well, like I already said, Max is drunk, so basically you have this handheld, kind of choppy, you know, bl blurry colors kind of thing, and it's it, it has this effect of where before it was a story being told to you. Now it's a reality that you're trapped in. It, you know, the handheld puts you right there, basically. It has that faux documentary kind of feel to it. And capturing just glimpses of it, of, of what's going on. But, yeah, the, the, there are, I didn't I didn't for sure count, but I wouldn't rule out that there's almost as much, maybe as much, the time spent just watching these cutscenes as actually playing the game. And again, whenever you go into one of these cutscenes, Max is gonna state something, you know, I, getting into this elevator, I knew that something was horrible was gonna happen when I got out. You know, and, and just every time you approach a door, most of the time when you approach a door, the cutscene will open it for you. And yeah, so to distract, they, they just blare out. If these things weren't so repetitive and, and didn't become white noise, you know, it's white noise, it's because there is so much of it. It's not because, and some of it is actually pretty decently written and the acting is good. The acting is all good in this one, but it's because it's always there and you just, you tune it out after a while. So you might even miss if he's, if something is being said that was important because you're so used to every every couple of minutes at least something being restated, something you already knew. And these cutscenes also basically usually they will put you in they will put you behind cover and their choice of cover sucks. They will put your, you know, a, a single wielded weapon in, in just one of your hands, even when you're running around with two weapon, two, two one-handed weapons, which you can do a little bit, I'll get more into that, and a two-handed weapon, which, who would use a one-handed weapon when you have a two-handed weapon? I mean, I mean, literally, we're talking about the difference between a handgun or small SMG versus an assault rifle or a shotgun. I, I'm sorry, but this makes no sense. And 
it the cutscene ends just as the you know the the guys notice that you're there or just as Max announces that he's there so you instantly have to fight and you first thing you have to do is of course switch to the weapon that is much more obvious to use they don't even have the common courtesy of reaching around and reloading the gun why wouldn't he's a cop why wouldn't he reload as he moves from place to place and investigates or prepares for the next area it's yeah and talk about linear the first two games are quite linear there's pretty much you you're just finding the correct path to proceed down in this one not only is that one path extremely clear most of the time, it's literally the only thing you can do. There's just... It's extremely close to being a rail shooter, really. And, and literally, the game is just... After, after a while, you realize that whether you've played this game for five minutes, or five hours, things aren't really going to change in it. It's going to be one cutscene leading to a shooting gallery, leading to another cutscene over and over, with you just trying to get to a place to rescue one of these characters that, that the game makes sure we hate with nothing really being accomplished and just constantly... The, the first and second game... It, it, all three are these run-and-gun shooters, but the first and second games don't tend to have enemies suddenly spawn. It's kind of you kill the guys and then maybe some... like maybe you move a little further and then you, or you go into another room or something. But you can get an overview. In this, enemies will spawn. Early on, they will actually spawn in your blind spot, which is just unfair and doesn't... that just deters the player. As does, as, as I already said, the fact that nothing is really getting accomplished. This is again not really a spoiler. You can tell from really early on in the game that nothing really gets accomplished. It's not... I, I don't... I suppose that what they're trying to do is kind of play with this idea that, you know, video games are very much this, you know, you go from point A to point B and you, you accomplish something and then you move on, you know. Almost all games have this kind of to call it, you know, that, that kind of structure of the, of the levels of the gameplay, the objectives. And maybe that's what they're trying to do, but I'm again going to have to invoke Kane and Lynch. Those games do it far, far better. You are getting things accomplished, it's just that you wish that you weren't. You're, you're finding yourself involved with something that you it's, it's making you sick to your stomach to be doing it, but you know that you have to, and and the fact that you're succeeding doesn't... It's... it's... You don't want to be succeeding, really. You just feel like you have to. That is great. I mean, a, a quick example that people probably know of, it, it was in, in a lot of trailers and such, the, the, the bank robbery from the first game, it's like you don't really want to be doing that. And there's all, all these innocent people right there and you're just not, you're not a bad guy. You're just, you just want to save your family. And, and this is part of doing that. And it just, the fact that you, that you accomplish something doesn't mean that you're happy that you accomplished it. It has this sort of feel of, yeah, those two games have, have the effect of you basically just want to keep going, you just want to get it over with, you just want to get to the end and you just want to give these characters some peace, you just wanted 
done. And this game has kind of the a deterring effect on the player where you're just like, well, why am I even bothering? It's, it just keeps going wrong. It's, it's not even that, that things are you know, somewhat getting somewhere. No, it's just, it keeps going wrong. And it's, it's, I've seen it in a couple of other, I've actually mostly seen it in recent movies where, yes, it's, the, the heroes will keep failing and then eventually they succeed. Because that's one way to keep the plot going, the, the movie moving, is, is to keep having them fail and then they eventually succeed. It's just, it's not very interesting. You, you want the characters to succeed at some things. It also ma makes it very unrealistic that suddenly they're succeeding, you know, in spite of all these failures, suddenly they, you know, end up doing something that works out. Now, the... Yeah, we, we have five difficulty settings, and you have to beat the game at least once to unlock New York Minute Mode as usual. I think as usual. The, the, the levels are fairly decently designed. The, the issue is just that these areas are far too small. There's, there's like I said, or kind of said, no exploration. And the action is heavily scripted. You can't really choose your own approach. It is just, you got to shoot people. I mean, when you play the first two, you don't have a huge amount of freedom, but you do choose if you want to start by just you know, starting to shoot at some of the enemies, or maybe you want to throw a throwable at them first, but, which, by the way, there are almost no throwables in single player in this one. They are in multiplayer, but yeah. And the thing, it, it does evoke the, the kind of feel of an action, you know, Hollywood action flick. In, in part with the, what's it called, the, the, yeah, the, the, in, for how linear and, and how not at all free, which, again, is not something that is Rockstar at their best, and Grand Theft Auto, for that, they do some stuff to, to mix it up. There's, there are a few, the bits where you're basically locked in place and you are moving somewhat and you have to be shooting people. So like one of the earliest examples, I mentioned that you know going to a rave in a helicopter. You end up in that helicopter shooting from it, you know, at people down below and you you know you might be in some kind of vehicle moving and you're you're shooting at people while it's being driven and those sequences are fun definitely i will very much admit that it also the climax is quite cool at, at first it didn't look like it was really going to top the second one but at the very end it it is pretty pretty cool now the the very ending is fine it's it doesn't really feel like it fits. It feels like it goes in a different direction than what the game has really been setting up. <sighs> a big problem also with the with the story and uh, yeah, keeping the player interested is that this tries to shock the audience, but it doesn't have enough different tricks up its sleeve. I'm not going to give away what it does, but it's something that's, it's a misconception that's, it's, it's a trend currently, sadly. I hope it dies soon. And yeah, they just, they, they keep doing the same thing where the first two games, what makes these such effective tragic stories is that different things would happen that there are twists and turns in the story, but they're not... It's not the same thing over and over. That 
keeps you guessing and, and keeps you interested. But the same thing over and over, just you end up becoming numb to it, even if you weren't when, it, when, when that particular story started. Now, I suppose that more or less, which also somewhat brings me to, this is, this is much too mainstream. The, the first two games were more, more stylized, and this is kind of, well, this is what people expect from a shooter today. And so it's, it's brutally gory with uh, the, yeah, again, more like what Rockstar does than what the first two Max Payne give others. The only, the, the, the John Woo, you know, goreless violence, you know, bloody but goreless violence is completely gone. Now, the, I will say that it does, of course, take you across a bunch of different places and give you some different guns to play around with. The, the places are fairly varied and, and interesting enough. I already mentioned the, the, this nightclub with a rave going on. There's a mansion. Various places around Sao Paulo, which, by the way, feels extremely authentic. And when you get to the favela, especially engaging and alive, there's this really effective sense of, yeah, just the, the yeah, living in this just terrible ghetto of, of, is also, it, you know, some of the people you encounter are these very desperate, poor people, and it goes into, you know, what can you be driven to by abject poverty, and it very much touches upon the, the contrast between the, the rich and the poor, which in Sao Paulo is quite stark. Now, the... I suppose... I, I should go into some of the... You know, I already mentioned the, the John Woo, the bullet time is still there, and the shoot dodge. And the, they're, they're basically, they work quite fine and, and are still fun to use, so there's still that of Max Payne. I, I don't personally mind that cover was introduced, I don't think, not a lot of shooters get made these days that don't have some kind of cover system. The problem is that the cover system of this is really not it's, it's extremely basic. You can't even... You can still do that roll move that you could do in the you know, first two, especially in the second one, but it doesn't take you from one bit of cover to another, even if it, it really seems like it should. I, I haven't seen another game with such a basic cover system, and the, the cover system and the shoot-dodge, it seems like the people who were doing one were not on speaking terms, with the, the people who are doing the other, because they don't really... It seems like the, the first and the second games did not have cover, because that was not very usual for video games back then, you know, in 2001 and 2003. This one has cover, and it has the shoot dodge. Plenty of games today have cover, but the shoot dodge is... So why not make them work together? Why not do something interesting? The, the doing a dive through the air is the kind of, it's, it's one of these John Woo style, yeah, dodge moves, but yeah, from, from cover, why not have you, you know, running up over the, the cover, like if you're just behind something and you just vault over it in, in slow-mo and, and do some kind of, I, I don't know, yeah, like, vault over it and then get on the ground and shoot from down there, something, but just, there's nothing new to that, and you can't really use cover to, yeah, using cover to launch into a shoot dodge is no different from not using cover, there's no, yeah, there's, there's missed opportunity there, and the, 
and, and shoot dodging as well as rolling does not you know lead very easily into cover so yeah I, I don't know why they they did but but yeah the the shoot dodge does have this fairly decent new thing to it where you can remain on the ground for as long as you like basically and keep shooting from down there you can even reload while lying on the ground and you can move the camera in 360 degrees that's pretty cool and the there, there are a couple of new things which are you know, very much inspired by the, the bullet time thing and which are among the only things that the game does of, as far as you know, innovation in any kind of gameplay basically you can you can slow down the last foe killed cam and you can keep shooting firing bullets into them and, and you'll see you know their body will react realistically to that which does I, I just gotta mention wounds on, on like faces look like they're they're just stuck on it, it really looks terrible I, it makes me think of like the House of the Dead 2 and 3. I, yeah, it just does not look real at all, which is also surprising because it tends, to, the, the gore in this tends to look quite real. But, but anyway, yeah, if you hold down, you know, the right mouse key, which is the one you also use for more precise aiming, you will slow down the last full kill cam and you can, you know, and letting it go, bring it back to full speed. And there's no, this doesn't cost you bullet time, for example. And then you have the last stand mode, which I really wish they hadn't called it that because there's also a last man standing mode in the, what's it called, no, the multiplayer, so searching for one, well, yeah. Anyway, basically, I think it only works if you have painkillers on you. And if you were shot so much that you should be dead, the basically the game will go into bullet time without costing bullet time it will cost painkillers you will be like yeah the, the, the game will sort of the, the camera will sort of indicate who shot you and if you manage to kill them it, it gives you a grace period in which during which to kill them and you're, you're out of luck if like your gun is out of bullets or if that guy's behind cover or something but other than that it's it's a good idea certainly I've, I've seen some people complain that oh you know a bunch of the time the guy's behind cover or you know you don't have more bullets in the gun stuff like that stuff like that happens it's still a pretty decent feature I'd say and um, I suppose that pretty well covers that the the Basically, the only way to interact with your surroundings in this one is to shoot them, but yeah, you, you can shoot pretty much anything. And the level of detail is quite impressive, especially in the, in the levels. The, the atmosphere is quite effective. Again, even though it is this kind of... you don't necessarily care. It's, it's not like... you know, again, Camel Lynch games also have pretty good... Uh, not quite as good as atmospheres, if I recall, but you actually also care about what's going on in addition to that. Now, I already mentioned that the Max is, is drunk. Perhaps that explains why the movement is just this awkward kind of... It, yeah, the... the a lot of the time you get killed because your character rushes ahead or stops very suddenly. And yeah, there's, there's really no reason for this. It's, it's similar to what happens in a lot of Assassin's Creed games. I'm not going to go into a lot of ranting about those games. I've already done videos doing so. Yeah, basically you don't have full control of when your character your character might keep walking after you stop pressing the button or not start walking until like a full second or so after you start pressing the button and yeah, this 
kills you. And don't even try to aim down from cover. That is just, you are better off getting out of cover and then aiming down, actually. I should also say that, in addition to how basic it is, when you get out of cover, you are just completely out of luck. It's again just this, I don't know why they, I, I don't even know how they did it so poorly, but even if you press crouch and then you disengage cover, you are still just a sitting duck. It will take you like, yeah, a, a second or so before you can properly move away from it. Yeah, it's just really, yeah. Anyway, the... I suppose that... Actually, there are also some good things with this, you know, with the game having more control of the character in this way. When you are uh, taking cover and you're... and there's a window where you're, you know, that you're about to shoot through. The first time, if you just tap the, you know, the, the trigger, your character will literally smash out the window so that you don't have to be spending any bullets, you know, shooting through it or getting, you know, the, the glass getting in the way of your bullets or anything. That's, that's a quite good detail. And when you, if you're moving, when you press the grab gun button, literally your character will do a roll in which he grabs the gun, you know, Neo style, grabs the gun and then ends up, you know, with it's aiming it completely ready to, to shoot. And once the roll is over, you still have complete control over your character. That is great. I don't know why there are so few of these really good things in the game, but anyway. I should also mention one of the worst things about this where you don't have full control of your character is if you get too close to a wall or, or something, basically your you know the, the gun will be pointed directly upwards. This might be mostly for the two-handed weapons, but those are the best weapons, so yeah. And you will literally just shoot up when you press the trigger instead of just I don't know why they couldn't just have, just prevent the player from going so close that he would point the gun up. And yeah, it's, and again, it'll, it'll take like a full second for you to move back to where you can, where you won't be pointing the gun upwards. It's just needlessly frustrating. Now, I... There's not too much to say about the painkillers, other than, yeah, they're, they're back, as I've already said. They, basically in single player, you don't really have health regeneration, which is quite, you know, health regeneration in single player is quite common for these cover shooters today, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it works that you, you don't have that, and you actually do have to look around a little for these painkillers and maybe save them up some and maybe be careful with where you spend and how you spend the bullet time, making, making it count. And that, yeah, that, that brings me nicely into the guns, where basically they, they ditch the, you know, full loadout thing where you can just carry an endless supply of guns, you know, you can carry all the guns you pick up over the course of the game. Because again, that's not really how shooters are made these days. It's very much kind of limited. And in this one, I quite like how they do it in this one. Max has this dual holster, shoulder holster, so he can be carrying a single, two single-handed weapons and one two-handed weapon. But if he chooses to dual wield, obviously he'll have to put down the single-handed weapon. You know, they don't all have shoulder straps, I guess. So, yeah, that's... So it is. And, and basically, you know, you'll probably want to be using your two-handed weapon until that one runs out of bullets. And if you can't get more bullets right then and there, you just ditch that weapon and go with 
dual wielding. And the really great thing about this is you can swap any of these three weapons anytime you want with anything you find on the round. So you can dual wield any weapon that you can hold in one hand. This is not limited to pistols. This includes small submachine guns like the Micro Uzi. And it... Yeah, and, and some of shotguns. So yeah, that's, that's quite cool. And... The... And, and of course the, the two handed weapon, and I already mentioned assault rifles, shotguns, as of course a sniper rifle, some more you know, like explosive type weaponry, and I suppose that pretty well covers the gun stuff. As usual, we do have, you know, it's, it's gritty and we have this drugs, sex, death and money kind of, yeah, you know, a lot of corruption. Now, the... I suppose that more or less covers the single player. I... Yeah, that... I will go into the multiplayer then. Basically... You, you have the, the typical modes, you have the you know, deathmatch, team deathmatch, and if anyone, you know, there's also some downloadable ones. I have them. I haven't had anyone play them in the 12 days and six and a half hours of multiplayer that I've played. I literally, I keep trying, no one ever plays them. And then there's the one which I was able to play once. Last man standing mode, yeah, like the single player. And basically, you know what last man standing is, so I'm not going to go into basically, there's five rounds, and yeah, you die, you're dead. And you, you earn points for killing the others. Whoever has the most points at the end of those five rounds wins. And then there are these other rule sets. There's one that's called Shoot First. I wish I could tell you anything about it, but no one wanted to play that one. So yeah, in these 12 days again. I should also say, this is the game I've had the most problem with playing multiplayer. I was actually, I was going to play today, but it freaked out on me. At first I, it forced a, a cold reboot. Then I was thrown out of two separate games. The first one for like connection problems, the second one for syncing problems, which is almost the same thing. And again, it's just, it could be my own computer. I just want to point out that I haven't had problems playing the Assassin's Creed games. You know, minor problems, but nothing like really big with those games uh, or either of the Left 4 Dead games. Yes, I will get to the Left 4 Dead 2 review fairly soon. So yeah, I or Bioshock 2. Nothing else has really had any. Kind of, this is also the game that had that's had the most graphic problems of the, and I don't mean in, in, a, in the explicit sense, I mean with the graphics engine just flipping out. And again, I play plenty of new games. I've played games that have come out since, I, wasn't this a release of 2012 summer? Yeah, I know I'm kind of late in the review. Max, Assassin's Creed 3 and Hitman Absolution did not have problems, and both of those were late 2012 releases, so yeah. Anyway, the... Yeah, that, that, there is one more mode in under the Last Man Standing thing, which is called Painkiller, and th this is described as the logical next step of the Dead Man Walking of the second game. I agree, and it's a ton of fun. Basically, at the very start, it's basically like Team Deathmatch, and I think it's like the first and second people who kill the others become Max Payne and Raul Passos, the guy who hires him in this game, and works with him over the course of the game. And Max Payne himself has two silenced Ingram Mac-10s, and and Raul has this, I think it's called an, an RPD, an, an LM, you know what, 
it's a handheld machine gun. So yeah, and both of them have a lot of a full thing of bullet time and two painkillers, but no health regeneration, which is otherwise common in multiplayer. And yeah, it's the two of them against everyone else in the match. And whoever either directly kills or at least does the most damage if a couple of people are taking care of killing either the Max Payne player or the Raul player becomes the Max Payne player or Raul player. And yeah, and whoever is Max Payne and or Raul earns the most points for killing and you of course also earn points for killing them but less points so yeah that's a lot of fun that is really really cool and that yeah that brings me nicely into the 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 final mode of uh, multiplayer game wars which is where it kind of differs from other, you know, more from other games. Basically, it's five rounds in a row, and the it's it's the place where you go for multi for objective based multiplayer in this game. And basically, the, you as a player of in multiplayer in this game join up to and including five crews, and these crews fight each other, and you earn more XP playing Gang Wars, for example, and yeah, basically you, you do this, yeah, wh whoever wins one match, that will determine the objectives of the next match, and uh, yeah, these, these objectives will be like, you have to kill one certain player, but he's hidden on the, the mini radar. And you have to kill like five enemy players in order to unhide him on your mini radar. Or, you know, one team has to play, place, plant bombs, the other team has to defuse them. It, you know, capturing turfs, which, you know, basically domination mode. And yeah, it's, it's very much about, you know, if, if one team loses something they were trying to do, maybe the next round is them trying to escape, and that's also sort of a turf kind of thing. You have to capture a bunch of checkpoints in a row, but, which, by the way, I forgot to mention about single player, is all checkpoint saving. You can always restart the entire chapter or just reload the most recent checkpoint. And... Yeah, it's, it's, oh, oh, and final round of Gang Wars will always be a team deathmatch. And either it will be with a limited amount of lives, or it'll be regular. And you, if, if it's with lives, you earn lives by winning, you know, some of the first four rounds. And if it's, you know, just timed, then you earn points by doing by winning the other rounds and this is a place where you know the other team can actually win if if the if the team that if i've played where like and literally like i said just these six and a half hours over 12 days i've experienced that in game wars one team might lose the first four rounds and actually managed to win the fifth round. And that does mean that they've won the entire gang war. So that's quite cool that they still offer that. I, it, it, I find it gets boring when successive wins just mean that a team will keep winning. That's, I, I understand why, but I just feel like you should always have a chance to beat your opponent in, in something like this, you know. And the, other than that, you have this, you, you can, you know, you, you earn money, which you can spend to, you know, buy new stuff. There's a lot of different, you know, customizing options. Any, any gun that you have, you could, you know, customize in some way. And with limited 
customization, customization spaces. So I think it's like five for each gun, and if you, you know, and, and there's of course more than five different things you could put on it. So you do have to make a choice there, and you know you can yeah you can buy different things. So you you earn money and XP by playing, and money can be increased by placing wagers. And you'll be told if someone placed a wager on you. And then there's this vendetta system, which is quite cool and really fits this. I mean, again, we are in Sao Paulo, and basically the different... You know, it also has the characters from the first two games as, you know, playable in, in Deathmatch. But whenever there's any kind of team thing going on, you are part of a gang, a Sao Paulo gang. And there's... These, well, a couple of the gangs are actually from Sao Paulo. I already mentioned New Jersey. There's a couple of mafia gangs as well. But yeah, it's all gangs and you can customize exactly what they look like. And yeah, so anyway, it makes a lot of sense to have this vendetta system. And basically the vendetta system is that if, if you keep being killed by the same player, then you can place a vendetta on him and then, you know, if you kill him next, you know, next time either of you kill each other, you win the vendetta and I think that earns you like more XP and yeah. If, however, you, if he kills you again, it's like you were put back in your place and he's the one who earns the more XP and then I think I'm not entirely sure if you can place a vendetta immediately after. And if if people keep killing, like it won't have the vendetta option if you know if you were the one who killed this guy the last time. If if you're killed by someone but you killed him last time, you can't place a vendetta. You know that's same level. There's no reason for a vendetta. You might say, and you're always immediately told if someone placed a vendetta on you, and they will have. If, if you approach someone you've placed a vendetta on, the mini radar will, they, they'll also have more health. So you do really have to, you know, fight to kill that guy. But he, you know, he'll have a special, I think it's like a target thing, instead of just a red round, you know, red circle on the mini radar. So you'll know that he's the one you've got to make sure to kill and not be killed by. Now, I suppose that more or less comes. The, the multiplayer has this adrenaline meter, which is, it's like the bullet time meter in single player. And basically, yeah, killing enemies will increase it. And you might, I think you keep the adrenaline you don't use, even if you die. I don't, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I feel like but, but, yeah, and you can also use this for, and, and adrenaline can be used to sprint, which, yeah, again, very much, you know, a, a typical rock star thing. And it can really change something, yeah, you'll, you'll want to use your adrenaline right. And as this bullet time-ish meter fills, you also, you can activate a burst. And there are three levels of bursts, and the third one's always going to be the most powerful one. And for example, a burst might mean that you... There's, there's one they're called paranoia, which makes your enemy th see allies as enemies and enemies as allies. So you can walk right up to them and kill them. And you can, you know, get them to kill their, their buddies and stuff like that. Or at least focus on them. You know, there's, there's one that gives you more armor and there's there's one that increases how much damage your weapon does and at first level that's all it does it doesn't change what weapons you, you're carrying but on the second level it'll give you that handheld machine gun that Raul also has in painkiller and if on the third level it'll give you this what's it called like cylinder thing grenade launcher you know one of those with like I think it's like six shells before your gallery loads, so yeah, 
that's pretty cool. And that, you know, you gotta earn it, but then it also really can pay off. And in addition to this, you also have, you know, you can, you can create loadouts. There's five total customizable loadouts, and then there are like three that are already set up. And for each of these loadouts, you choose the burst, you choose the weapons. And again, like in single player, you can carry, you know, two one-handed weapons. And these can be guns, these can also be like, you know, there, there's a, what's it called, like a, a nightstick and a, a stun gun. And then there's a, and you can also carry a two-handed weapon. And then you can carry, like, something on your, your head and, you know, first thing you're going to think is, ah, oh, helmet. Possibly, but not the only option. You can also carry, there's, there are a couple of different masks. Some of them make you, like, earn more XP by killing, I think there's a yeah, bal balaclava, I probably terribly mispronounced that word, but if that, that will make you earn more XPs on enemies killed from behind, and yeah, all this kinds of stuff. There's one that makes enemies reload slower because it'll like scare them, you know, scary mask, and then, you know, you can put something on your chest, which again can be like you know, a Kevlar vest, there's also, there's a bomb diffusal thing which protects you from all explosive damage, which is, is quite cool. And, you, you know, you can carry various other items, you can carry something that will make you heal faster, you know, health regeneration faster, something that makes your mini radar more accurate, various things like that. So there's a lot of customization options. Now, what you want to note, I've, I've already mentioned, you know, you're thinking, oh, just, I, I want a little of everything, obviously. Well, the more you're carrying, the heavier your loadout is, the, the slower you move, the slower your adrenaline regenerates. If, if you get all the way up, I don't think it regenerates at all, actually. It'll, like, automatically. And the slower your health regenerates. Makes a lot of sense. So, do you want to just be carrying, like, one handgun and maybe a helmet and be, like, really fast? Or, do you want to be carrying the bomb defusal suit and be extremely slow, you know? It's, so yeah, there's there's a lot of freedom. But why didn't they just put this stuff in the single player mode? It's it's just like with Assassin's Creed. The only way they know how to make it challenging and fun and give freedom to the player is in multiplayer mode. Ridiculous. But anyway, yeah. So and and obviously you unlock more of these things as you play longer and these attachments for your guns. You unlock those by using that particular gun, you know, for so and so long and to so and so much effect. That will also level up and unlock some of these attachments. So yeah, the, the game can certainly have you playing for a long time, and will keep offering different things to do and and to to use, you know. And, and some of these new things will be free, and some of them you'll have to buy with money. So, yeah, the in-game money, that is. And that does quite well cover the multiplayer. I realized that I did not cover the extra modes for single player, which, like I said, it can increase replayability. Basically, you have three extra modes, all under what's called Arcade Mode, which is a quite good title for it. I already mentioned New York Minute Mode. Then there is Score Attack, where basically, yeah, you're just you're trying to earn as much, and as many points as you can, and you can also like shoot destroyable objects and make those not only blow up and you know kill enemies, but also increase score. So basically, just you're, you're running around destroying everything. So yeah, and you can also there are some additional rules for that. You can make it like black and white, and you can make enemies more aggressive. And there's there are incendiary bullets and, and stuff like that. So that's fun. And those two modes earning like I don't know about this. I haven't actually. 
I, I didn't try these modes very much, just a little less I want to mention. If you get like platinum in both, you can get you know, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. If you get platinum in both, you get extra characters for multiplayer, which is quite cool. And yeah, it's it's a way to keep you playing and, and also just yeah, un unlockables in I s and, and yeah, that brings me to the last of those modes, which is called challenge mode, where basically you're, you have to complete these challenges, and it's, by the way, all of these modes, it's just, it's, it's again playing through the single player portion of the game, just with these d different rules for it, like a time limit, or having to earn the most points by killing, and then the challenge mode. The challenge mode basically, like, it might tell you you have to kill, you know, you have to empty a revolver and you have to get a headshot on every single bullet. You have to, you know, there, there are some enemies here and there's a car you could shoot to blow up. They have to die by you blowing up the car, or so and so many have to die by you blowing up the car, you know. Yeah, stuff like this. And, yeah, basically if you don't manage, then you'll have to retry that area, that challenge. And, yeah, these, uh, yeah, these increase replayability and give these unlockables. Which also reminds me, in regular single player, you can also find pieces of golden guns. And once you've found all the pieces of the corresponding golden gun, that gun will become golden in single player, which makes it more effective in some way or another. For example, like, you know, you know what, I only read about this and I don't remember the details. You can read about it too, sorry, I do not remember, but yeah, it's, it's something that makes you explore the little bit that the game does allow you to do, so yeah. And in multiplayer, you can also make them golden, that's one of the possible attachments, so yeah, that's again, even if you only want to play multiplayer, really, you might want to play single player just to get these golden guns for better in, in multiplayer. Yeah. I think I just killed Grandma. And I suppose that pretty well does cover it all. I should mention something that Max feels, Max is kind of a fish out of water in Sao Paulo and to add to that Almost everyone around him speaks Portuguese, and since Max doesn't understand it, the player doesn't either. There are no subtitles translating almost all of this stuff. It, it, there are a few things that get translated that, like, you know, maybe Max knows that, or it's just, you should really understand this, but yeah. And, and usually you get what's going on from, like, con context clues, and yeah. And hey, you might learn a few new or, or you know reaffirm some Spanish swear words. So that's always fun. And uh, yeah, that that works quite well. I I was really happy to see that they did that they actually had so much dialogue that wasn't in English when you know you know they don't speak English. Not everyone does down there, but still, when you know, then there are a few times where characters will suddenly be able to speak English. They don't break this, you know, break this rule of their own too often, but it's still a little annoying when they, when they do. You know, mo most of the people who do speak English, like Raul, he worked in, in, in either New York or New Jersey as a cop, so yeah, he knows, you know, American English. So he went to the academy in, with, with Max, so yeah. I do believe that that quite covers it. Yes. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.